All right, golf to tour, special treat for you, Mike Clayton himself. We're off to PK, Peninsula Kingswood, one of the designers. Mate, we've got 88 people seeing it up, maybe a few more. What advice do you have, Peninsula Kingswood? Tell me a bit about it. Well, uh, which, are they playing both courses? Well, we, we get to play both courses. We right. play the north course first, then the south course. So I last time I was there was 2006. I haven't seen it since tour school. Um, I heard it's been completely revamped. I'm looking forward to it. So, uh, yeah, run us through. Run us through a few things. Well, the north course is shorter. It was always, well, when I first saw it, I carried there as a kid in the assistance tournament. And it was, I didn't know at the time, but looking back, it was probably the worst course in the country on a really good bit of land. It was so bad, it was amazing. So, um, it, Peter Thompson built two new holes, which made it much better. He added, added what the holes you'll play is 13 and 14. And then, um, so that kind of broke the back of the, the, the routing some of the routing problems. Yeah. And then we redid it 2000 and then on a pretty limited budget and then completely redid it when they merged with Kingswood. So it's it's uh, shorter than the South course, a little trickier. High handicappers think it's more difficult because it's more difficult around the greens. Okay. But it's, you know, it's not, you know, by modern standards, it's not that long, although it's, I don't, I don't know what it is, it's probably, 6,300 metres maybe off the back. What's but your uh, what's your highlight? What, what what hole stands out to you as a as a designer that you you're like this this is this is something I'm really proud of. Well, the two par threes, the second and the 14th are great looking holes. Uh, the par fours, 12th was always a really good hole. The tee on the original course was in a terrible position. It was way left and forward, and it was a really rinky tee shot. So when we did the first changes, we move the 11th green to get the 12th tee in a much better spot. So that's a, that's a kind of a hogsback par four, medium length, really good hole. Uh, with the par fives, probably um, 17 was a dreadful over the hill blind par four. It got stretched out over the years to a, being a really cool par five. And yeah. the sensational Cam Davis is a driver from 280 yards, so 250 meters to about yeah. 10 feet. Wow! It's a shot ahead of, so it, it's a really good par five. It's so it's yeah, it's a really it's, fun course. It looks great. It's the purest course in terms of vegetation in Melbourne because it's nearly all just the indigenous coastal manicums and the indigenous heath, um, sorry, and the indigenous heathland. So it's beautifully vegetated. It's kind of interesting, undulating land. No bad holes. A couple of um, more than a couple of great holes. And by great, I mean, you know, holes that, you know, you, when you go to Royal Melbourne, there are probably 10 great holes at Royal Melbourne. Peninsula's got not that many, but a whole bunch of holes that are really world class. So it's really good fun. And the South Course, which was always the better course, it was always longer and more difficult. It was famous when we were kids for the, for the Tiger team, yeah. which the members, which the members kind of never played off. There were these teams that were way back that kind of stretched it out to, I mean, 7,000 yards. That was a long way in 1970. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of it's short now, but um, there was, there's a stretch of flat golf from the second through to the seventh from the south, which people mistake for being underwhelming. It's just really good flat golf. And then you get back into the more undulating ground from the HT and you know from there on it's really good. But but I mean most people I mean the ranking sort of golf digest rankings came out the other day and the north was I think five in the country and the south was about sixteen. And there's no way there's that much difference between the golf courses. In fact, it's easy to make an argument the south course is better. It's just different. It's gone from being the more difficult course to for high markers probably easier because it's not as difficult around the greens. Yeah. But, but for good players, I, I think the South is still longer and more difficult and just as much fun, All right, really. the format these guys are playing, they're playing a two-man Ambrose. So uh, anything can happen. The pressure's on the driving in the two-man Ambrose. Each player's got to get six drives away each. What are the key driving holes? Where, where, where can someone hit the middle of the fairway, 
and the other person have a lash. Like to mine the third hole on the north, that's yep. a ripper of par five. If you get one cranking down there, you can have a little flick wedge in, but uh, it's all about hitting fairways. Yeah, the third north, the fifth north, the other par five. You've got to get one ball on the fairway, then you have the second guy can have a smash. Probably the sixth, you know, it's good to get a drive in play on six, and if someone's a long hitter, they can try and drive it over the bunkers. Same at eight, really. There's a safe drive out to the right, and if someone gets out in play, then you can try and drive one over the bunkers at eight. Um, nine and ten are just long, difficult holes where someone needs a decent drive. Um, Thirteen, the short par four, same thing. Get one in play, then try and drive one up around the front of the green. Yeah. Uh, I, love, I, I love 13. It's a nice little drivable par four. You know, there's there's a couple of little drivable par fours out there that can sneak up. But uh, you can make a big number with some bad short games. Yeah, I mean, the short par fours are really the kind of the highlight of both courses, really. I think 13 on the north is really good. Seven, six north is really good. Um, 13, as I said, 13 north, and then seven and 12 south are really good short. You know, for long hitters, they're they're kind of drivable. But I mean, I mean, everything everything's drivable for long hitters now. That's under 330 yeah. yards. Um, you know, for, you know, for good. I remember we were building the we were building the 12th south, and the old business thing before we formed the partnership with Jeff Ogilvy. And, Jeff came out with a with a dry run, flew it. The green was all sand. It was, it was just sand. It hadn't been grass. And Jeff flew a driver on the green. It was like when Jeff was like probably one of the best players in the world. It was like, ah, uh, it was amazing. But, you know, so um, the short part was, but the sand belt, all over the sand belt, the 10th at Royal Melbourne, 3 at Kingston Heath, 15 at Victoria. They've got the, the sand belt's got the best collection of sort of sub 320 out holes in the world I think I mean better Great. than Heathland or, or anything in New York there you know there are 15 great holes around that length yeah very very true now you've, you've we've got the Victorian Open coming up on the main tour um, you've had a bit of a, a couple of good results there in the past Kingston Heath and Metropolitan so uh, you really cut your teeth uh, down there on the sand belt uh, learning the craft and, um, you know, it is a, a great spot to be in the world to play golf. Um, you know, any other sandbelt courses you recommend or what What do you have in the designing works that um, that we could be looking forward to in the future? Wow, well, I mean, if you haven't played Royal Melbourne, you have to play Royal Melbourne because it's, you know, unlike every other course on the sandbelt, you can make an argument that Royal Melbourne is the best course in the world. And you can't make that argument for any other course in the sandbelt. But as a group of courses, it's amazing. Man. And we kind of took it for granted when we grew up here that this is what golf is like. And you go away and you realise how good the sandbelt is. And it's much better than it was. You know, they built it in the, in the 20s and 30s. And it took them 40 years to overplant it with the trees and fill bunkers in. They never should have. Uh, and Graham Grant, who was the greenkeeper at Kingston Heath, really started the restoration ball rolling in the early 1980s when he took a lot of trees out of there. He, re he, he restored bunkers, he changed a few greens, but most of the work they did there was restoration. And, and, and we followed the exact same path of Victoria sort of 15 years later. So, well, for, for, well, he started in 1982, we started a Victoria in 1995. So the sand belt, arguably the sand belt's never been better than it is now. So. Any chance you get to play any of the sandbelt courses, it's, it's worth taking up. I mean, Tom Doug just read Yarra Yarra, and it's just it's, it's so much better. It's amazing how much better that golf course is than it was. Wow. So, and, and, and for us, kind of, we're, um, we're doing Matt Doggins course at Seven Mile Beach in Hobart, which is... That's, that's interesting. We're yeah. um, golf got an event in uh, in March um, down at uh, Farm Boogle. Um, I'm going to do a little scouting mission, go out there and see if we're going to have a little look-see at the course, grab the old high car and have a drive around and um, just uh, see if we get a little sneak, sneaky peek. But yeah. um, I caught up with Matt at the Queensland Open and uh, he was, uh, well, at the Queensland PGA, I should say, and he was, he was telling me all about it. So I'm really looking forward to that course. Um, it looks like uh, it's a spectacular piece of land. It's a really good bit of land. It's, it's a spectacular sight. Amazing views over the water. I think there are maybe three or four shots on the whole course where you can't see the water. 
which doesn't make the golf any better. It just makes the experience of playing it better. Um, for people who've played Bamboogle, it's really Hobart's Bamboogle. It, 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 it's the same sort of golf. It's, it's great sight. It's all sand. It's brilliant undulation. So as long as we don't mess it up, it's going to be really good. So I'm back um, there. We're sort of halfway through at the moment. So okay. I'm back down on Tuesday and Wednesday next week. So I've been there for a month because Mike DeVries, my partner in the business, is he went back to America for Christmas. So he was he went back there a couple of days ago. Yep. So Matt and I there um, next week to check it out. So but it'll be open kind of early to mid next year, I think, which is, you know, it, probably the best description of it is, is that it's Hobart's Fun Google. Right? So it's been amazing for golf in Tasmania that it, it's really going to be the in terms of playing top 100 public courses it, it, it's the place to be now in golf wow in well mike uh, appreciate your time um obviously you're on the roll with elvis there uh, on the caddy bag he's down at rosebud is he gonna make the cut what's the what's the verdict uh he's gonna make the cut he got 69 today so it was for 67 69 six under so he's kind of well top 20 is so, so he needs a I mean, I caddy for him here two years ago. He made the cut by a shot and shot two sixty threes on the weekend and finished second by a shot. So that's there we kind go. of the plan. Yeah, hopefully. He can't get 63, 63 on the weekend. So uh, best of luck. Good caddying on the weekend. And uh, uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon. And uh, thanks for the insight there for the golfer tour. And I'm sure our guys will uh, enjoy it out there on the course. So it's been awesome chatting with you. Thanks, man. Enjoyed it.